Thanks. Greg, I'm straight Hello, Alan. Glad I caught you. You have a minute? Sure. How was New York? Did you have a good trip? It was fairly successful. Any further word on our new wing? Yes, I have some news. I was just going to leave a message for you with Dory. I was wondering if we could get together later on today and discuss the whole situation. Oh, I got a pretty full schedule today. Well, how about if we meet for a drink after work? Could you spare a few minutes then? Sure. I think I could manage that. About five? Sounds good. What do you say we meet in the little place across the street from the hospital? All right, I'll try to be there as close as five as I can make it. Fine, I'll see you there. Okay. Bye-bye. No, I didn't. But it was touch and go right up to the last minute. I was afraid that I was going to have to call you and either cancel out or postpone it. I'm glad you didn't. So, uh, what are we here to talk about? In a minute. Let's relax and enjoy our drinks first, shall we? Okay. But I don't want to be too late getting home. I promise I won't keep you any longer than I have to. I uh, take it we're here to talk about the new cardiac wing. Yes, we are. Well, did the Hardwick Foundation approve your recommendation? Not officially, but it looks pretty good at the moment. Oh, Alan, that's great. Yes, I thought you'd be pleased. What time do you have? Ten past five. Oh, I thought my watch was fast. Anyway, if they give us the go-ahead, I want us to be ready to move. There's an awful lot of detail work involved, and... I'm I, sorry, I, I, I'm late. Oh, hi. Come, sit down. I was uh, beginning to wonder what had happened. Well, it's been a hellish day. Hello. I didn't realize this was a full staff meeting. Oh, I guess I forgot to mention it, but seeing as we're going to be working together, I thought it was a good idea for us to meet and discuss this jointly. Monica, before we get started, let's get you a drink. What would you like? The uh, martinis are good. Really? I'll have a Manhattan, please. Thank you. When did you start drinking Manhattans? Just now. So, Alan, what's the occasion? I was just starting to explain to Rick. It looks like we're coming into the home stretch on the cardiac wing. And if it becomes a reality, I want us to be prepared. Now, I am going to be relying on both of you quite heavily for suggestions. Because cardiology is your field, and you know better than anybody else how this wing should be set up and equipped for its maximum benefit. Well, I guess that's true. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. Good, I appreciate that. And I know that Monica feels the same way. She's already done a great deal to help me. Mm -hmm. How can uh, I help you out? Well, first off, I want you to prepare a list of uh, suggestions and ideas ready for the architect if and when we get the approval from the board. Now, I'm going to recommend that you be put in charge of this project. All right. You will be totally free to choose your own personnel. But I have promised Monica that she can have a place on the staff. I um, trust that there's no objection. Not if that's what you want. <laughs> Does that count as an objection or not? No, I'm not objecting. Well, I never would have guessed it from your expression. Monica, it's uh, no secret that I've had some unfortunate experiences. That uh, little escapade with the helicopter, among other misadventures. Oh, I don't think there's any need to bring that up. My intentions were good. Thank you. Look, we have all had dissensions and disagreements in the past, but if we're going to be working together, we've got to be able to put these things aside. There are no victories to be won fighting ghosts, are there? Well, I'm totally non-combative. Oh, good. Now, I wanted to warn the both of you that it's going to take several meetings for us to get this thing coordinated. I'm sure that it will. Now, I know how busy you both are in the hospital these days, so I was thinking it might be a good idea for us to get together in the evenings or possibly on the weekends if we have to. Uh, do you think that's really going to be necessary? Well, I don't see as we can accomplish very much during the course of a normal workday, do you? No, I suppose not. Just that I'd rather not sacrifice my free time. I mean, if I have to, I will. But I don't want to leave Leslie alone too long. Well, whatever you say is fine with me, Alan. I can be available at any time. Considering the importance of this, I would think anyone would. Must be nice not to have any responsibilities. Well, if you thought that, you should have taken them on. We will try to accomplish as much as we can as quickly as possible. I don't want to work any hardships on anyone, nor do I want to commandeer your private lives. But as Monica says, it's a worthy cause. I'm not disputing that, Alan. There's one thing I'd like to know, though. Are you going to be present at all these meetings? I certainly plan to be. Why? Because I don't want a repetition of the situation where Monica decided to substitute for you. You really like to harp on that, don't you? I just don't want to end up wasting any more of my time, that's all. 
I can see that there's little friction here. <laughs> Not on my side, there isn't. I can't speak for others, of course. I would like to think that we can work together in some kind of harmony. In fact, I insist on it. There's too much to be done. Don't worry, Alan. I'll do my part. Good. I mean, after all, we're all professionals. We've got to be able to put these minor irritations aside and pull together in all this. Now, the first thing is I think we should put together a tentative work schedule and make some definite plans. Night Eyes, a world premiere movie. The Six Million Dollar Man moves to Mondays with a special two-hour adventure. Mysterious beings trap Steve Austin on a lost island where no one can leave alive. Then, what would happen if you were taken hostage by terrorists? ABC News takes a close-up look at this modern-day problem on Close-Up Hostage. Now stay tuned for The Edge of Night, next on ABC. Good. I've been trying to reach your brother, but he's not in the hospital. But I know you've discussed Miss Holbrook's case with him. Yes, I know about it. What's happened? Well, she fainted in her apartment. Dr. Weber had her brought in. I came in a few moments ago to take her temperature, and she was tossing and turning. But she seems to be delirious, and her temperature's gone up to 104. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see what we can do for her. Just stay away from me. I won't let you. I tried to wake her, but I couldn't. Get out! Get out! Who does she think she's talking to? <laughs> He's got a patient in close to critical condition. Now, why wouldn't he have worn his beeper when he went out to dinner? Would you know he didn't? They've been paging him. He hasn't answered it. The desk said something about Glenville. Glenville? That's where Heather's mother lives. Maybe he went to visit her. Well, he may not have known how serious her condition was. He ordered the blood count this afternoon, but hematology didn't send it up until he'd left the hospital. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Oh, it's with her chart, um, but I haven't read it yet. Well, where's the chart? I'd, I'd like to see it. Oh, it's at the desk. Do you want me to get it? If you don't mind, please. I don't All know right. where they were. I didn't see them. Look, she's moving around a little bit too much. Why don't we put the size up? I don't want her falling out of bed. Would you pick up some sodium salicylate solution? Are you going to feed oral medication to an unconscious patient? Well, she's not unconscious. She's delirious. <laughs> we can sit her up and feed her drop by drop if we have to. And we'll do that until we can get her temperature down to 101. Then what? Then it's a battle between Lana and the infection. At that point, there's nothing that anybody can do except wait and see who wins. You're gonna have to take it. We've got to get your temperature down, so it'd be better if you cooperate. Come on. That's it. Pick up your chin. I'm sleepy, so sleepy. That's right, and you'll be able to get a good night's sleep. Come on. That's it, Doctor. Good. All right. Should be able to get a good night's rest now. I think we ought to have a special nurse for it tonight, if we can find one. Well, you can try. How late are you here? Till midnight. Okay. If you can get a special, or if you can't get a special, you stay with her and then alert the next duty nurse to uh, keep a special watch on her. I certainly will. Don't worry. Uh, do you want to see the hematology report now? Yes, please. All right. Uh, the platelet count is 40,000. No wonder. She's got pneumonia. Welcome mm. home. Mm. Huh. Sorry I ran so late. Is it cold out? What do you think? <laughs> Good grief. Well, we have to do something about getting you warmed up. Uh, I've got your dinner ready. It just has to be heated. Would you like a little, uh, you know, drink or something? Well, maybe just a little coffee. And if it's all right with you, I'd like to just have dinner on a coffee table. I am really bushed. You can have dinner anywhere you want to. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was such a rotten day. Well, it's okay now. Now that I'm with you, it makes the whole terrible ordeal worthwhile. I know. <laughs>
a crust of bread in a house of love, and, well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You keep thinking that way, and we're going to get along just fine. Hmm. Go ahead, finish what you were telling me about Lana. Oh, just that it was a definite case of pneumonia. What I can't understand is how Jeff could allow himself to get out of touch with the hospital. I mean, we couldn't raise him to save our lives. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll have a good explanation. It just seems strange, that's all. I mean, he was so involved with this whole Lana case. She had an attack, he picked her up, dropped her off at the hospital, and then he totally vanished. It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. A lot of people aren't showing up tonight. Laura's not home yet, either. She's still out somewhere with Scotty, and it's practically midnight, and I've gotten a little bit worried about her. In fact, I even called Lee. Well, did he know where they might have gone? Nope. Not an idea. They have tended to be somewhat secretive about their dates these days. Won't she say anything to you before she left? Oh, what she always says, I have a date with Scotty tonight. Goodbye. In terms of...